Hello everyone. Good evening. Welcome back to my channel, Civil Zest. So today we will discuss about our numerical on the topic of flow net, flow lines, and equipotential lines. So here we have the statement of a numerical, which is let's see. Here it is its diagram, and here it is statement. The complete flow net diagram for the dam below includes a steel sheet pipe cut off wall located at the upstream side of the dam. Means it is our it is a dam. in which at the bottom side there is a steel sheet pile cut off to provide stability to the dam to there is a steel sheet pile cut off you can see there it is a steel sheet pile located at the upstream side of the dam it means that it is on the upstream side of the dam and it is the downstream side of the dam so the steel sheet pile is at the upstream side of the dam the dam is half a kilometer in width means it is telling the width of the dam which is half a kilometer it means half 1000 divided by 2 500 meter next we see that and the permeability of the silty sand stratum is 3.5 into 10 raised to power centimeter per second means it is giving us the k the k coefficient which we have already uh, studied in the formula that Q is equal to K delta H into N F divided by N D. So in that formula, K is the hydraulic conductivity or the permeability of the soil, and here its value is given, which is 3.5 into 10 is to power minus 4 centimeter per second. Next, find total seepage loss under the dams in liters per year. Also tell would the dam be more stable if the cutoff wall was placed under its tail water side. first thing that we have to determine the total seepage loss means we have to determine q so we have to use the formula q is equal to kh delta k into delta h means head loss into nf divided by nd so next question is that also tell the would the dam be more stable if the cutoff wall was placed under steel water side means if we place this steel sheet pile from the upstream side to the downstream side currently it is placed in the upstream side but if we place it in the downstream side or tail side then what will be the effect on the stability of dam so we have to tell the effect on the stability of dam if this sheet pile will be there at the tail side of the dam so these basically are the two parts of this question first we have to find the seepage loss and then we have to tell the effect of stability so let us start by writing the data and solving the numerical with the help of our equation So next friends, as we have discussed the statement of the numerical, we have to understand the flow net diagram. This diagram of the numerical. So let us see. Here is the complete diagram flow net. Here is our dam, and you can see that it is mentioned that delta H is equal to six meter. Now what is delta H? Delta H is basically the difference between the upstream side and the lower and the lower stream side so basically the head difference is denoted by delta h or you can say as head uh, hl which is head loss so basically the distance the difference between the head of the both sides is the delta h next if we see that there are the flow lines and equipotential lines here is our dam and here is the seepage of the water through the soil and the green lines we the shown here are the flow lines these are the flow lines and the blue dot dashed lines are our equipotential lines now what is the procedure that we have to count the number of flow lines and number of equipotential lines from this diagram so let us start the green lines are flow lines let us start we have uh, we know that the top top side of the soil is also considered as one of the flow line so this is our first flow line this line this black red line this black line as it is the top of the soil it is also considered as a flow line so it is our first flow line we mentioned we can mention it first flow line next this line is our second flow line next this third line is our third green line is our third flow line and you also know that there is you can see that impervious clay strata means it is the rock on above which the soil is the water is passing through the soil this is the hard rock strata or impervious clay strata you can say that so it is also considered as the flow line so if we consider it as a flow line so basically how many flow lines we can we have 1 2 3 4 so basically we have four flow lines we have four flow lines in this flow net diagram next we have to talk about the equipotential lines you can say that the blue dashed lines are equipotential lines you can count them 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 you can say that there are nine equipotential lines but this is wrong because you know that 
this upstream side and this downstream side are also considered as equipotential lines because every point on these lines these upstream side this line and this line every point on this line are the same at uh, is at the same head or potential or pressure energy so these are also equipotential lines so basically these are the nine equipotential lines which are visible from which are visible from this diagram and also two from this upstream side and downstream side so basically there are 11 11 number of equipotential lines 9 from these and 2 from these 9 plus 2 11 so we can easily say that uh, we know that the how are the how much there are number of flow lines and equipotential lines is in this flow line diagram next we have to talk about the number of flow channels and number of equipotential drops I have written here the number of flow lines is equal to 4, the number of equipotential lines is equal to 11 as it is clear 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 7, 8, 9, 11. So next step is we have to write our data and we have to find the number of equipotential uh, flow channels and number of equipotential drops. Here is a dam width 500 meter which is 1000 divided by 2 as it is mentioned here the dam is half of a kilometer in width. Next permeability of silty sand stratum means it is K hydraulic conductivity of soil which is 3.5 into 10 is to power minus 4 centimeter per second is its unit. Number of flow channels equal to NF is equal to 3, number of equipotential drops equal to ND is equal to 10. Simply you know that that number of flow lines minus 1 is equal to number of flow, flow channels and number of equipotential lines minus 1 is equal to number of equipotential drops. Similarly you have to subtract these two values from 1 and you get the number of flow channels and number of equipotential drops. Now one thing you have to remember that then when we have to use the formula Q is equal to K delta H into NF by ND then we have to use then NF means here number of flow channels not number of flow lines. So you have to clear about that that you have to clear about that that NF is number of flow channels and ND is equal to number of equipotential drops. Here it doesn't mean that NF is equal to number of flow lines and number of equipotential drops. So basically you have to understand the concept between the number of flow channels channels and number of flow lines so you then you have to solve the numerical correctly so here we have to use number of flow channels and equipotential drop which is 3 and 10 so here we have got this next head loss is equal to delta h is equal to 6 meter which we have already discussed and that is the difference between head of the upstream side and downstream side is mentioned in the diagram which is 6 meter so next we move on friends let's see we have to calculate the value of cp loss here is its formula cp loss is equal to q is equal to k into delta h into nf divided by nd here it is nf divided by nd and nf is number of flow channels and nd is a number of equipotential drops so let's see q is equal to 3.5 into 10 is to 1 minus 6 into 6 6 is the head loss into 3 divided by 10 simply i put the values here is equal to 6.3 into 10 is to power minus 6 meter cube per second now here you notice one thing that it is meter cube per second per meter. So here it means that this value is the seepage loss per meter. It is the 3.3 into 10 is to power minus 6 is the seepage loss per meter. We have to find the seepage loss in the whole in the total dam. So we have to find the total capital Q. Here you can see that it is a small Q. Small Q is for the per meter calculation. But now we have to calculate the whole complete dam CP loss so we have to find capital Q capital Q is equal to L into Q simply uh, we know that uh, the uh, here it is given that the dam is half kilometer in width so here we have to put 500 half kilometer 1000 divided by 2 500 into our this value CP loss per meter simply I put it 500 into 6.31 6.3 into 10 is to minus 6 is equal to 3.15 into 10 is to minus 3 meter cube per second. Now next the value comes 3.15 into 10 is to minus 3 meter cube per second. Now it is not per meter it is a whole CP loss of the entire dam. Next the question the, in the question we have asked to the dam uh, in the, the, under the dams in liters per year means we have to calculate the CP loss Q in liters per year not in the meter cube per second we have to tell the answer in liters per year so to convert this value in liters per year we use some uh, you can say that we, it is our unit conversion 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liter you all know that and second thing you have to know that 1 year is equal to 31 
5.56952 सेकंड मींस इट इज द नंबर ऑफ सेकंड इन वन ईयर वन कंप्लीट होल ईयर ऑफ 365 डेज सो वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट इट सो फॉर कन्वर्जन वी हैव टू यूज दिस डाटा एंड सिंपली आई पुट हियर q 3.15 10 3 फ्रॉम दिस वैल्यू मल्टीप्लाई बाय 1000 फॉर आवर 1 मीटर क्यूब लीटर एंड सेकंडली 31.5 10 डेज टू पावर 6 इट इज आवर दिस ईयर वन ईयर इज इक्वल टू थर्टी थ्री वन फाइव फाइव सिक्स नाइन फाइव टू सो इफ यू फर्दर सॉल्व इट वी गेट क्यू इज इक्वल टू नाइन नाइन फोर जीरो फोर थ्री नाइन एट पॉइंट एट विच इज इक्वल टू अप्रोक्सीमेटली इक्वल टू नाइनटी नाइन मिलियंस लीटर पर ईयर सो अप्रोक्सीमेटली वी कैन से दैट इन दिस केस इन दिस फ्लो नेट डायग्राम आवर सी पे लॉस इज नाइनटी नाइन मिलियंस लीटर पर ईयर आवर क्यू इज नाइनटी नाइन मिलियन लीटर पर ईयर इज अवर आंसर सो आवर फर्स्ट Query is solved. We have to find the total C P L loss, and we have found it in liters per year. Now we move toward the next step. The second part of this numerical is also tell what the dam be most stable if the cutoff valve was placed in this tail water side. So its answer is I have written on this. No, it will cause higher uplift hydrostatic pressure beneath the dam, which results in the decreased stability of the dam against sliding towards the downstream side. Now what does it means? Clearly, it is uh, saying that no, it is it is not possible that what the dam will dam will not be more stable. Dam will not be more stable if we cut this steel sheet pile at the uh, if we place this sheet pile at the bottom side at the downstream side because because at this down at this side the hydrostatic uplift hydrostatic pressure is low. It is low, but but when we shift it from upstream side to downstream side, then Greater, higher up, uh, up, 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 uplift pressure will create, and at the result, as a as a result, the sliding the resistance against sliding will decrease. So basically, in this sense, we are showing that if we place the this sheet, this steel sheet pile at the downstream side, then the result will be that the uh, greater will be the higher uplift hydrostatic pressure will develop in this in this whole um, net flow diagram, and consequently, the Resistance against the sliding of the dam will be less. So when the resistance against the sliding will be less, there will be instability of the dam. So due to this reason, it is better to place this steel sheet pile at the upstream side because if we place it at the downstream side, then it will affect the stability of dam because of the increased uplift hydrostatic pressure. So basically, you can simply write this this uh, these sentences, or you can uh, also write it in your own words. If we sum up the whole today's lecture, so the, this is the complete numerical of flow net in which we have to find the seepage loss of the entire dam in liters per year. So we uh, we written the given data and we use the formula, which is seepage loss equal to Q is equal to delta H into N F divided by N D. Simply put the values, and then we have to find the entire dam. It is kept small Q is for for C P loss per meter, and the capital Q is C P loss of the entire dam. Next, we have to find the liters per year. For that, we use the unit conversion and converted it into, and that come into 99 million liters per year approximately. Further, uh, we have to uh, we answered this question that uh, in the last we have heard about the stability of the dam. So basically, these are the two questions, uh, two parts of this question. Hope guys, you like this video and you understand this concept. If you have, if you like this video, then kindly subscribe my channel.